Okay, so we're back in the dubbing theatre, sometimes called the Auditorium, and uh, I'm joined by Sven, and you're going to show me some of the plugins and tools that we have within Pro Tools to enable us to use the RO 3D format. That's right, yeah. So um, when we started um, developing our format, it was um, obvious that we had to come up with something in order to make um, 3D panning work in an environment which is completely used to 2D only. And um, the first limitation we had, since our format or 3D starts with a 9.1 format or doesn't setup, doesn't this fit doesn't in Pro Tools. <laughs> right, that doesn't really fit in Pro Tools. It, it didn't really fit in any of the DAWs, but since Pro Tools is really like a de facto standard in post production, um, that's where we had to develop for, and that's what we did. So, so how have you got around that limitation of maximum of 7.1 within Pro Tools? What we did is we basically introduced our own busing, so to speak. So we developed our the Oro Panner, which we see on the screen on here, um, which basically has the same principle that we've seen on the DFC with uh, the horizontal panning on um, X and Y and the vertical panning, the 3D panning, basically on the set axis on on the second mm. joystick. So we can so we can actually use the joysticks, right. or uh, and obviously with all the usual automation parameter recording within Pro Tools. Exactly. But the key thing here with this is the, the what I'm actually doing, the steering, is not coming back into Pro Tools, this is going out into your mix engine. So right, yeah. So what we do is we, we have our panner and we send the audio, it's just a plug-in, so we insert it on a regular insert. Um, we take the audio and all the pan information and feed it into our what we call the A3D host, the Oro 3D host. It's, a, it's basically a background application running in the background, which we don't have to care about. It's just there. Once we've installed the plugins, it's there and it's running. And yeah, in uh, fact, uh, ever since I installed my 2D plugin, I've got that little, icon, right. that little yeah, icon, yeah, icon because yeah. that's your 3D host engine running. Exactly. Th this is basically the sign that you are Aurofied. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's right. So this is this is a little set setting app that we can talk about later. It's just they, the a few settings needs to be need to be set in there globally. Um, the A3D host is the background process. It's kind of a rendering engine in the background. So it receives the audio uh, from the panel and it also receives the pan information. And then it does the rendering and uh, the format and kind of a remote control for the A3D host is our mixing engine, which we see on here. Um, I can set a configuration in here. I can set all the oral configuration, 9.1, 10.1, 11.1, up to 13.1. But I also can, can do um, a standard 5.1 mix. And that by just simply clicking the configuration. So I do all my panning, for instance, in, in oral 11.1 and um, if I want to also do like a 5.1 or 7.1 mix, all I have to do is really switch the configuration from 11.1 to 5.1 or 7.1, or even to quad or LCR. Um, and since this is all a vector-based panning, it will translate 100% um, from 11.1 to 5.1, not taking into account all the set information, but obviously all X and Y pannings. Mm. So again, this is the mixing engine. It's kind of a remote for the A3D host. And this guy over here, the Aura Return, receives the audio, the rendered audio, as an 11.1 .1 stem back into Pro Tools. So everything that we do and, and all the steering and all the controls and all the automation is happening in Pro Tools, but um, with the ability to do it in 3D. And that's... So you can effectively, with the... With the with this plugin here, you're, you're, that's either bringing it back into the same Pro Tools session, the same project, if you've got enough tracks and the power, or more, perhaps more often, perhaps from Pro Tools 10 days, it's going into a separate dedicated Pro Tools system, which is 
the recorder that's recording the the, the final mix actually if we want to hear all the panning we do we need to set up the auto return in the same session sure this is basically so you can just, just put that into some aux back. inputs right so you just hear what you're doing exactly yeah. exactly and from then on i can i can still transfer it i can i can set up multiple auto returns so i can have like um, a music stem in Auro, a dialogue stem in Auro, and an effect stem in Auro, and they all have their dedicated Auro returns, which I can then capture and print in my session or feed it into an external recorder machine um, to, to record the, the individual stems. So, in terms of doing a, fi a film mix, rather than the DFC where the audio, the Pro Tools in essence is a Pro Tool, is a, is a playback device and you're doing the mixing within the DFC. Here essentially we're using the the D control as a control surface for Pro Tools. So we are in essence here on on this desk control surface mixing in the box. Absolutely. Yeah, it's all happening in the box. And do you find that people are start more and more people are starting to mix in the box? In general, um, y yes, I think I think that's definitely a trend. I can see um, advantages and disadvantage f advantages for both ways of working. Um, I can see clear advantages of for the traditional workflow where you where you have like y the console which we have in the back and you get all your elements into the console and then you do basically everything on the console. Um, for me, the beauty really is the combination of both. And how does that? What's so good about having both? Yeah, you know, I mean, there are certain things on, on a console like this um, which just works and which sounds really good. A lot of people like using a DFC or Harrison console for their dialogue chains. They don't have to worry about all the plugins they're using. They just set it up and, and then from there you go. And the same is true for music. And I also have to say, um, particularly for the new immersive sound formats like Auro 3D and even Dolby Atmos. Um, the console manufacturers are far ahead of the workstation manufacturers. Wow. Um, so it, you know, AMS have, have implemented the, 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 the height layer, the different uh, buses, they've implemented it on the controls on, on a nice layered basis to, right. to replicate that. Yeah. Uh, and Harrison presumably have done something similar with theirs. Exactly. They, have, they ha both have native integration of of Aura 3D and also Dolby Atmos. So, um, if I would be a like a studio owner and I would have to decide if I want to to work in the immersive um, sound formats, I I would really need to think twice what kind of console to buy at the moment. Mm. Like five or six years ago, I would have said this is the future, full stop. This is definitely the future. But now I'm not so sure anymore. That's interesting. That yeah. Yeah, pardon the statement, the, the point, but you're almost going backwards. So, yeah, w we always thought that control surfaces was a progression forwards. So right. Actually, there's a possibility that having that, that console, that dedicated console, is actually going to be a better workflow. Yeah. Do you think the Avid F6 is going is, is to change that dynamic? No. In essence, it's a, a different version of, right. of it's this. It's, it's still it doesn't just bring anything controller. new to the table. Right, yeah. I think um, the, the basic structures need to change in Pro Tools. Um, and that's hopefully going to happen soon because we all love Pro Tools, right? And we want yeah. to work with it. But it we are facing limitations, and that's why we had to develop our tools in the first place because yeah. it's not possible. And, and now it is. There are still some limitations in, ter in terms of ergonomics and workflow. Um, but it's a way to work and it's very stable and we, we keep on improving things and we keep on improving um, the workflow and, and um, so that it really feels like it's like one, one unity, so to speak. Because of course, because you're using Pro Tools plugins, all those parameters are automated so they all get stored in the state. Uh, there is no separate element, obviously with the DFC, you've got all the automation, all the, con the, c the functions of the desk, all the settings of all the modules, that's got to be saved separately, recalled separately. The great thing with, with this is everything is saved within Absolutely. the project. Yeah. So total recall right. in every sense yeah. at one hit. Obviously, if you're using two, the, a, a DFC or a Harrison, 
and Pro Tools, you've got to recall all the settings on on the on the the DFC in this case, as well as recall the Pro Tools project. Yeah, absolutely. It it all stays in Pro Tools, and that obviously was very important for us that we don't ha have like a little app in the background doing something that we also need to store and save and yeah. everything. So really, everything is in Pro Tools and everything can be saved and stored and automated in, in Pro Tools. Yeah. So th what's the, the plugin top left that we've not yet talked about? Yeah, that's something we introduced in, in version two. Uh, we call it the Orobus and um, essentially to, m to mimic um, stem mixing with our tools, um, this is something that, that helps you doing it. So we can collect uh, a certain amount of, of panel tracks, let's say, for all the effects. All my effect um, Auro panel tracks will be collected by one dedicated Auro bus, and then I can, I can do um, like volume adjustments for all the panel tracks in, in one. So group. It's, it's effectively brought stem mixing into the Auro right. engine. Yeah. And in the Auro return, for instance, I can then say um, I not only want to listen to um, the complete mix, but I want to listen to a dedicated bus. For instance, I can set up one of the Auro returns to, to output the effects only and one for only the music and one for, for um, dialogue, for instance. Mm -hmm. This is yeah. again the, the idea of having stem mixing. Sure in in the box and and with our tools implemented so the the one tool we've not looked at yet is the up mixing because obviously we've got a lot of legacy stereo content right a growing amount of legacy 5.1 content <laughs> yeah, that's correct yeah. which of course we need to be able to bring into this yeah. new 3d world yeah. so how do we do that we we call it our um ecosystem so we have all these tools and the ideas to connect them um, to our A3D host to just keep the routing and everything simple. And we can do the same with Aromatic Pro. So I just close the panel here and I open one of my Upmix um, plugins. Okay, um, so side that's some that's people familiar. might already be familiar with it, yeah. right? Um, the same idea uh, with Aromatic Pro. I don't have to care about all the routing. Um, well, I need to care about the input routing because I need to send. Um, Either I have it on a track or on an aux track. I need to send audio in, obviously. But then I can also use um, the mixing engine to, to basically collect all the audio yes, in the Oro 3D environment. Because obviously, if we're in a 3D environment, the, the output of this up mixer blows our 7.1 limit. So we need to be able to put root the output of the, of the up mixing, the 3D up mixer, exactly, exactly. into the Oro host mix engine. Yeah. We also do 2D up mixing. So we have basically a, a a smaller version, uh, a 2D version only of Aromatic Pro, which does mono stereo to 5.1 and in the future also to 7.1. But the 3D version of Aromatic Pro um, gets either mono stereo or 5.1 inputs and does all the Auro formats. We we'll start with 9.1 and go up to 13.1. And obviously I have all the parameters. Um, I have different ambient settings. I can change the ambient settings in here. I have a front rear balance, I can add additional height information, I have an equalizer um, and strengths to, to change the effect. And presumably you've done a little work to make sure that if the down if the if this presentation is played in five one, that the down mix of the up mix Absolutely. works. Since <laughs> the very beginning, since we started developing the listening format and the technology the compatibility to 5.1 has always been essential because 5.1 is essentially how we carry an Auro 11.1 mix to an audience, no matter if this is the digital cinema or on a Blu-ray. So yes, um, down mixing is definitely uh, very important. And if we would have a tool that doesn't really down mix properly, then it wouldn't be of any use for us. Mm. So yeah, and even even People tell us that 5.1 created up mixes um, fold down really, really good to stereo and mono. So, of course, that's something that's very important also for like broadcast world, where sure. stereo and even yeah. mono is still yeah. important. Absolutely. So <laughs> 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 very much so. We are, we are actually pretty proud of 
what we did with our tools and, and um, all the hurdles we had to take in, in order to make it work. And with Oromatic Pro in particular, we get so much tremendous positive feedback for it. And it's a great tool, really. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much for taking the You're time to show welcome. us the tools. Yeah, absolutely. Very welcome.